Oh, who's in the chair now? Who's got the dog days going now? Are you admiring? I'm just waiting for you. Yeah. Just checking out our sweet pergola. Mm -hmm. Awesome shed. Nicest shed in town, Meg. You're going to make me paint it again, aren't you? Here. Um, well, so I have this extra piece of roofing. This is the roofing from... I mean, it's not even that different, is it? That's not the same color. Come it's on, Meg. It's pretty close. It is pretty close. Darn it. You thought it was going to be a major difference. I just, I don't know. Is that too dark? No, it's not too dark. Okay, so. Okay, I'm six feet tall, so it's a six foot ish doorway. We're going to have two doors, double doors, open out this way. We don't want them opening this way and taking up floor space. We want them to open out. That door will open in. It's like a regular exterior front door. Fine, no problem. But these will open out this way. We're gonna have a light here and a light on this side. Or we have some pine in the barn that's been sitting there. If you guys remember, we did rafters that we cut them twice. The first set of rafters I intended on having a seam through the middle, then we got the idea to use that extra space as storage, so I wanted solid rafters all the way across, which are 12 feet long. Oh, that's right, I forgot about that. Those extra two by sixes Six. are, I guess, all of the pieces that I had cut the first time. So we have all that extra stuff laying around and it's been stacked nicely and it's been drying. So I can use that stuff and cut it up and it pretty much is acclimated and the moisture has been drawn out of it. It's pretty dry, so when I make these doors, they're not gonna shrink and expand so much. As if I, you know, made green doors. Meaning, like I just cut new lumber for them, so. And over here I have some wood that I really haven't looked at in a while. And... I think hopefully I got plenty. I think. Now they're looking. Uh oh. Are those one inch pieces? What is down there? There's gonna be a snake in here. I know it. I don't care. They just, you know, they startle you. Okay, I need 12. Um, what do you call it? I need 12 of those two by sixes to do this. And I got some two by fours here. I got a bunch of stuff all over the place. Hey, so real quick, I wanted to mention something about these tractors. If you have an RK tractor like me, um, see, I, I didn't know if uh, you needed to preheat the glow plug on diesel engines like you do on like regular trucks, but there is, if your engine is cold and it hasn't been running, you can take your key, like mine right here, and you could reverse it, turn it that way, and I usually do it for about four seconds. One, two, see I'm holding it, three, four, let it go and then put it to accessory and crank it and it will start right up. It could be 30 degrees outside, that will start it right up. shooting for using seven of these boards these two by sixes okay and I'm gonna basically put one on the table saw rip it down make sure that edge is straight and then I'm gonna flip it around and shoot for that five and one sixteenth then I'm gonna cut them all for whatever height I'm dealing with here so I have all the boards the same then I'll get out my surface planer and I'll send them through all the surface planer, every single one of these individually, so that they're the same thickness.
step one is done, I cut them all to length. Now what I gotta do, since these are two by six-ish, uh, I gotta cut them down to five and a sixteenth, but I'm gonna take a little slither off of one side and then really hone in on the second cut. So I'll run them all through one time and then run them through a second time all at the same. And then hopefully we got some nice straight lines. We could put them up against each other, have some nice parallel runs. After that, I'm gonna have to uh, do a thickness plane on them. So I've also been looking into sharpening these. Anybody ever do that? Man, this is getting gummed up too. I built this whole shed with this single blade. This is a Irwin 12 inch. I think it's a, maybe a 32 tooth blade. It's been really good. I've been cutting the poplar and the pine with it. Built this whole shed pretty much with that one blade. It cut all the framing, it cut all of the um, siding, the battens, everything. So it's lasted quite a while, pretty happy with that. It wasn't that expensive. But, I'd like to be able to sharpen it. Anyway, let me know. Run the, each of those boards through twice. I got my little feet here, so the saw doesn't, there, slide around. Oh. got back from shopping at the store. She doesn't like going out into public anymore. I like it here. Yeah, we like our place in the world and not, we don't really like venturing out too much. We got all these cut. Remember I was telling you all about the grains and quarter saw? This is a really nice piece right here. Uh, am I on the frame here? It's hard to see. This is a really nice piece here. This piece is more flat because they go horizontal like this. This one's good. This is really nice. The, this one has pith. That's not very good pith. This one's all kind of all over the place. So as far as consistency, you can really count on this piece and this piece and this piece really being well. So if you're shopping for wood, go to the end, look at it, depending on what you're using it for. I just ran them all through the table saw and I got all of the left sides here are perfectly straight. I mean, as much as I can. I don't have a an edger or a planer, they call it, uh, which would give me a super nice sharp edge on the side here. That's what that's the tool you need for this job. But I just ran them through once on the table saw. Now I'm going to flip it around once, and uh, we're going to cut it to the dimension which it needs to be, which is five and and one sixteenth. And Meg, yes, you have a question. I believe you spoke incorrectly. What? The machine that cuts this is the joiner, not the planer. Okay, sorry, honey. Right? Am I right? Uh, yeah, the joiner. Yeah, you said planer. Okay, good. I don't want people just, blowing me up in the comments. Just need to... If that's not a pool pump! <laughs> Actually, it was a pool pump. I don't have a filter. We know it's not a filter. <laughs> yeah. I know, I it's just called pump? it a filter. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. We're gonna make a filter. Don't worry. Everybody's scared about our pool. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you haven't, go back and look at the comments on that.
done planing. Right, yep. John? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So, that's really zoomed in. Okay. So, hey, guys, if, uh, if you like fire like me and Meg and everybody in the world, um, this stuff from your planer, if you have one, is the best fire starter out there. He successfully, even though this thing has really, really dull blades on it, we dropped it a 16th, ran all the boards, another 16th. We ran them until all of them were making contact, meaning that when it was running through, the blade was touching the board. So we are about one and seven eighths thick on all these boards. And what we're gonna do, there's a smooth side and there's a rough side. We wanna keep the rough side on the outside so it matches the rest of the shed since it's rough sawn lumber. Uh, most of it's poplar, this is pine, just cause I had it in the barn drying for months and months now and I don't think that it's going to shrink on me anymore. So we will now lay these out side by side and make the cross sections on them, the three of them for the two doors. And uh, yeah, we'll start the construction now. opening for the door is five foot ten and three quarter inches okay so immediately when we cut that in half we're gonna have two foot let me see now I have this app on my phone here it's called tape measure calculator I don't know this is Android it's a pixel phone so I don't know if they have this for iOS but anyway it's really neat because you could write five feet ten inches and then x over y would be three over four so three quarters so five foot ten three quarters divided by two and it'll put it in fractions for you so two foot eleven and three eighths is each section so two foot eleven and three eighths inches now what i did i went and measured the boards that we had laying around in the barn and they were two by sixes after they shrunk they got down to more like five and three quarter inches. So if we use seven panels going across like this, seven panels all together, we would divide this by seven. So where's divide? Divide by seven equals five and one sixteenth. So we need each of these to be five and one sixteenth inches and seven of them. Okay, so the design that we're doing here, all right, I'm gonna draw just one door because there's gonna be two of them. I'm going to draw one door here being the inside and this will be the outside view from what you see from outside the shed. So first what we're going to do is take all of our seven boards okay and we're going to strap them across like this. The boards are going to run this way vertically okay one two three four five six seven and then we're gonna put straps like this. I went ahead and bought a whole bunch of hardware at Royal King. So I got 3 8 inch by th 3 eighths of an inch bolts galvanized with some washers. I got them three inches. Um, so what we'll do, we'll put a bolt in every single spot here, all the way across one, two, three ties for both doors. Then on the front of it, what we're gonna have, now we're gonna have the same direction going this way with the boards. What we're gonna do then is just frame it in somehow. We'll probably have it match the windows, right, Meg? Instead of doing a picture frame, like 45, we'll probably have it go like this or something. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll have that, and then we're just gonna put an X to further provide some bracing slash strapping. So it'll look like that from the front and that on the inside. But I just wanted to show you the app on the phone is, it's pretty handy. So 
You have any questions? Mm-mm. No? All right, what we're gonna do, we basically made a deck of boards. So we planed them all, we did all those steps. Now we're gonna clamp them together and we're gonna get one of these straps in the middle and clamping them with one of these pipe clamps. So we'll get one of these, we'll put the lag bolts into it, let it bite and get the screw, the bolt, basically all the way down and then we'll unclamp it. And then we'll finish tightening it up because when it's over like this, there's a little space here. What it'll do, it'll pull that board up more if it's not clamped. So we want it to be loose at the very end so that it, the board can move, I guess, vertically, not skew it. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah! Ooh. All right. Wow, it's like we measured. Looks good, John. Good. Looks like I measured. Oh, that's rad! Look at that <laughs> thing! I want to see the outside. I mean, it just looks like a wall. But that'll be cool. That's great. Let's make the other one. So we've discovered that... Hinges are annoying. Hinges are quite annoying. Probably doing it wrong. <laughs> Wait, yeah, well, there's a good chance we're doing it wrong. But we made this prototype right here. John, I might need you to show the show our prototype. Okay. Here. Here. Show the prototype. So, Meg put this together. This represents the door. This is the trim on the door. We're going to have an X, like a classic barn door X. And then this is the hinge on it. We needed to decide where to position the hinge so that it could swing and not interfere with the trim that's on the outside of the shed. And it's more tricky than we thought it would be. It sure is, yeah. You think hinge, oh, just throw it on. Put some screws in, but nope. no. Nope. nope. Either that or we just are making it more complicated than yeah. it's supposed to be. Yeah. So now I'm measuring. It's all right, we'll get it. As long as the doors hang properly and Maybe close. It's just a shed. It's just a shed.
and we lucked out. It opens and closes perfectly. But that's not the best part. It's it has best a really part. cool creek. It does have a really cool creek. <laughs> Do the creek, John. No, for real, close it. For real? I want to hear it. Nice. It's a nice creek. Let's see if it still has it after we put the rest of the screws in though. Hinges are screaming help. Okay, so we got one door up and I just sprayed it with WD-40 just so, uh, so now it's... Doesn't make the cool squeak anymore. It will again. With the humidity in Virginia, forget it. It'll be back. That was time. not my vote. Yeah, I, uh, as soon as I sprayed the WD-40, I was like, man, what? It was kind of like an alarm system. If someone opens the door in the middle of the night, you're going to know it. Yeah, right? now so. what are you going to do? We won't, we won't do the oh. other one. See, it's coming back already. There we go. Okay, so um, I measured the rough opening and wow, our doors came out exactly to the 16th of an inch, exactly the width that we designed them in, which is unheard of. Usually it's a little shorter, but anyway. So everything went together really well. Both doors match perfectly, um, but the problem is that's on the rough opening. Now, if you look over here, Meg, there's a gap here and there's like, there's a nice gap. So we'll have to do some I don't know if we need a seal in there. I mean, you could see in the shed right there, but we couldn't anticipate that ahead of time with the hinges and everything. Um, so what we'll do now is take that into account and I'm going to take this door off and make a cut on this door and make the same cut on this door, anticipating that when we put the hinges on this door, it's going to also offer a gap. And I also probably put in maybe like an eighth inch or so, Meg, between the two of them. Mm-hmm and we'll have stoppers on the inside because when it does open it does travel a little bit this way into the other into the space of its you know sister door so we'll have to keep that in mind too but thank you for watching this friday's episode um it's going to be continued next week cliffhanger and yeah sorry for the cliffhanger guys but um but we're trying sometimes episodes don't land where our project end lands. Yeah, we're so. just, we're filming in a way that is just, this is what's going on right now. And it, when we get done, Meg makes the video and boom, we put it out there. It's not like always a complete story, but this is our ongoing project. We're gonna finish up these doors. It's gonna be painted green, like that door over there. And we're also gonna have a decorative trim of that X, but the lag bolts here work fantastic. Yeah, they did. I um, it really pulled all the all the boards tight, and happy with the end result. So. Oh, I okay. also I also want to share. I'm about ninety eight percent done with the gray trim, and I really like the way it's coming out. Looks good. I'm a fan. What do you think, John? Yeah, you like I'm the a fan gray? Too. I thought it was too dark at first, and then the paint dried, and it looks a lot better now. So yeah, I like it a lot, Nick. So we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Woo! Okay, love you.
love you. Bye. All right, girls are getting slushies. That'll be fun. Thanks, Aunt Allie. Had to call me and tell me the other day, Josie got a slushie. Now the girls have been asking about slushies. They never had a slushie. And Meg's like, what kind of kid has never had a slushie? She felt bad, because like Claire's almost nine. What kind of kid has never had a slushie? I don't know if that's a good thing as a parent or a bad thing. I don't know.